Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So the fourth encounter begins at the city entrance to IDA. And in it, you can see that we're going to look through the periscope to see where um, the cradle robots are going to attack next. And hopefully you've watched uh, the videos of the first three battles so far. If you haven't, the main thing you need to take away from it is that um, the Gamma Cradle, which is one of the main cradles of the three that you battle, is vulnerable to magic. So make sure you have a balanced team that has some magic damage. Anyways, so you can clearly see we are going to um, have to go into the city itself. And one of the cradles is bothering some citizens. So we're going to be here to stop that, of course, with the help of Iska. Again, I really wish I had pulled Iska or her AS version. However, of course, I don't have the stones to do that. I hope some of you have pulled. And even better, if you can pull both AS Suzette and AS Iska in the same 10 pull, that'd be amazing. Please leave some comments below if you've uh, had some crazy insane luck with your 10 pulls uh, this particular banner. Also, if you haven't already, uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. And I do have a Patreon account if you want to uh, support me that way. Okay, so the boy from the third encounter now shows his face and his true identity. And you can see that um, he's calling out uh, the big guns this time. And you can see it looks different from the regular uh, cradle droids that are kind of more, more like those uh, flying droids. This one's going to be a toughie. All right, so let's see what we're up against. So uh, I will say that um, it is recommended to have a very balanced team. This particular boss has rotating defenses, and you can clearly see at this moment um, it's weak to magic. If you try any other attacks, it is going to be null damage. That means not even resisted, but zero damage per se. So. It breaks up its defenses into 25% HP marks. And also, as a result, your AF will not be able to take it down in one hit. So you need to carefully manage your resources and um, take him down. The one droid is vulnerable to uh, Slash, and the other droid is vulnerable to Fire. So having Garia will do both, um, you know, duties. So you can see clearly that um, the guard of all the regular attacks. Unfortunately, I got hit with a first turn intelligence debuff and it basically made my magic users useless. You're bad. How can you call yourself gamer dad? <sighs> Even dads make mistakes sometimes. So it looks like it's going to be a multi-turn uh, effect on our heal healers and our magic users. In this case, the best thing to do is to rotate characters in and out. So you can see that uh, I'm just using Cure Leaf to remove status, which is the bite. Unfortunately, there is no damage to be done for these next few turns until um, the intelligence debuff uh, wears off on Garyu and uh, Mario. So I would recommend turn one, keep the two magic users in the back, and then rotate them in after um, you know, he hits the party with Intelligence Debuff. The Intelligence Debuff doesn't affect um, fighting or physical characters as much. Luckily, the boss itself uh, doesn't do a lot of damage. I'm not sure about the two um, cradles that were sitting with him, but um, of course the goal is to eliminate those really quickly. So if you do have a half AF bar and you have Azami and Aldo, being that they're Slash type, you also have Garyu, uh, which is Fire type, those attacks themselves will kill off the two um, cradles that are accompanied the boss, as you can clearly see from the beginning of this video. Okay, so intelligence debuff has finally faded, and we're gonna do full damage on it. And notice that um, after I've hit them a couple of times, there's no point using special attacks. So just use like regular attacks with um, you know your non-magic user characters for the first round. And so, you can see the bar stopped 
um, after 25% of its HP is down. And this is the warning that is going to change um, weaknesses. So directional shield change. Now the next quarter um, life bar, which is 25%, it is vulnerable to slash. And so we got uh, two of the best ones out there. I do not have Xion, otherwise I would have brought him. Um, but you know, you get the free 5 star with Aldo, and you have the free 5 star with Azami. At this point, being that the other two are basically useless, just rotate in Valor Chance to boost your damage as much as possible. So um, Serene is very useful in boosting you know, speed as well as um, power. And I do have Leclerc here uh, to help with her um, Valor Chant debuffing physical resistance. So, you know, you can rotate them in and out as you please. And you'll also see there's a reason you bring this specific team if you have this mix. Because you will have four different directional uh, shield changes in the fact that there will be four different weaknesses. And you'll need to be able to address each of those since it is not a resist, it's a full null damage on the boss. Okay, so slash damage is over. Directional shield change. There you go, what a waste. So at this point, you can see that Leclerc is coming in very useful. The boss at the 50% mark down to 25% is vulnerable to piercing. And guess who has a dual piercing slash blunt um, attack? We've got our uh, favorite teacher, Serene. So make sure you do have um, Invigorating Flog as one of your three moves in your moveset. And you can see it's got a countdown um, attack as well for the boss. So um, at this point, you have to be careful about taking a lot more AoE damage. So the single target damage isn't too um, dangerous. It does inflict some status. So again, Mariel's with uh, her Cure Leaf will remove that bite. Otherwise, again, keep on using your um, Valor Chance in and out to deal the uh, damage. Here we go. That's the one that you have to watch out for. So I believe it's non-elemental damage and it takes quite a bit. So um, make sure you have a Pure Cradle if you do as well. Okay, so we've gotten through three different shields and we're on the final one. So you can see Leclerc's attacks are absolutely useless. And this is the area where um, Serene will shine. So being that she's already got her full three attack charges with Invigorating Vlog from the previous weakness. She's the only damage dealer here in this AF. Everything else is 0, zero, zero, zero. But um, with just her Groundbreaker, or Ground Razor, I should say, it's more than enough damage. And surprisingly, even though we have a solo Aldo doing the AF, it does damage. Sweet! Stop flexing, Dad! Alright guys, only one more battle to go. So I'm assuming the next battle, which will be the final one, is going to be a level 80 type boss. And I imagine it's going to be an upgraded version of this particular boss. So I'm going to probably uh, bring a similar team, just because of the directional shield. And again, I hope you do have a varied team with um, different types of attack. Because this one really shows that having a lot of different um, types of 5 star characters is very useful. Um, both in this kind of um, side encounter as well as obviously for uh, tougher content such as other lands and so on and so forth. And of course, again, just like um, in previous um, encounters, it looks like Saki's maturing quite quickly and uh, assuming a role of an IDEA specialist. So, if you haven't read this by now, um, the commentary now tells you that the final encounter is going to be at Medical Realm in IDA City. So, in another few hours, we'll get it done. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.